Today I have a review of the next torch, my torch S 18650 model. Now this looks like a pretty standard flashlight and its outputs are a little behind the times. However, the thing that sets this light apart is that you can plug it into a computer, and it's under the head here, and change nearly every setting of it. I'll get to that later in the review, and because of that, this is going to be a bit longer review, because I'll be showing you the software too. I asked Nextorch for this flashlight to see if I could review it, because it was the only flashlight I could see that had this feature of uh, to be programmable via computer. So here's a picture of the packaging. Um, and it's a bigger box, and I'll roll in a still shot of it here. But what I don't like about it is that it's hard to open without destroying it completely. I had to uh, cut this plastic edge to get it off to show it to you. And down here at the bottom is where all the accessories came. It kind of opened up like uh, like this, but you had to kind of pull the top out of the way and then, then get to it like that. The uh, holster ends up holding the light okay, but... Uh, it's it's just kind of fl cheap, flimsy, and generic. It also comes with a USB charging cable and programming cable. It also came with a lanyard and a couple of extra O-rings. And then it came with a little product brochure and then a manual in a couple different languages. One thing I didn't like about the packaging was it had this Try Me arrow on it here. And uh, this it has a cut hole in the plastic so you can turn the light on. I just don't like those. I think it can, uh, especially if someone is to leave it on and run down the cell, it could uh, end up damaging the 18650 inside. So to recharge this flashlight, there's a micro USB under the head of the flashlight. And it takes a considerable amount of uh, turning to get it undone here. So here's the USB. And it's just standard micro USB. There are two O-rings, one at the top here and one here. The top one's very well greased and the uh, bottom one has no grease on it. You've got a charging LED then here. Um, this tells you when the flashlight is charging, red, or when it's full, green. Um, I really don't need to show you that, you know what that looks like. You do have to turn the flashlight on and then plug in the USB cable to get it to charge. Out of the box, mine I'd say was about half full and I measured it pulling uh, 0.75 amps and took it a couple hours to top up. Here is the battery that it came with. Um, this is a Next Torch branded cell. It's 2200 milliamp hours, 3.7 volt, 18650. It is a flat bottom cell and is a small button top. Um, I asked Next Torch who makes this battery and they, uh, they did not get back to me on that. While I've got this apart, the uh, threads are nicely greased on the uh, back end here. The, the flashlight overall is probably over-greased in my opinion, um, and I'll probably clean this up, but uh, no problems there. The light does go in positive end first. The end cap here, which I'll show you, um, doesn't have spring, but this is movable, um, and it just it's a thick, heavy grease that coats everything. One other comment about the battery is it is a standard battery, so it'll charge in any normal 18650 charger. It's not customized like other brands like Olight. So performance of this light is a little bit outdated in the 2017 market. Um, for a light this size, I'd expect it to have a turbo mode of 1,000 lumens, probably. It's okay, in my opinion, if a light steps down from this turbo mode into high. But this light doesn't have turbo. It has a maximum of 600 lumens. And, uh, and lower levels. And here's a chart showing those levels and run times. The light uses a Cree XML U2 LED, and it's only available in cool white. Heat was not an issue with this on high mode. On my test of 10 minutes with my thermocouple, it only reached 97 degrees. Just a little warm to the touch after 10 minutes. I do hope this design gets updated with a higher output LED and neutral white LED output options uh, to modernize it. So the stock UI in this flashlight is a little strange, and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. It has a long-term memory, it seems, and it starts out on high mode, and then works to medium and then to low, and then directly to strobe, which is back to high. Um, this is the opposite of what most people prefer on a flashlight because high can ruin your night vision. For this reason, flashlights start out on low and then work their way up as needed. 
Fortunately, this can be changed with the computer programming, which I'll get to here in just a second. What cannot be changed is there's no direct access to high or strobe, which is unfortunate. I, I do like that feature. Um, I don't think it's super tactical, but I guess in a way it is. Here is the Next Torch My Torch tuner software that you can use to customize your flashlight. I have my Next Torch flashlight plugged in, and I turned it on first and then plugged in the USB, like you would when you charge it via USB. So here is the factory default mode, and like I mentioned, it goes on first at 100% brightness, 50% brightness, 5% brightness, and then does a 9 kilohertz SOS feature. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, this should be inverted. And actually, the household method does that. Um, so, th in my opinion, this should be the default method. And if Nextorch wanted, they could add the uh, strobe as the next mode. The outdoor method, again, goes 100% brightness, 50% brightness, 5%. And then for its customized feature, they have it on in different um, amounts, as you can see here. Kind of an interesting method. In the military setting, um, it's again 100% brightness, then 5% brightness, and 9 kilohertz. Um, as we know from reading other things about the military, looking at other real, real tactical flashlights, um, the military values its night vision tremendously. Some countries even so much as to only allowing red flashlights. So 100% brightness, well, I think it should really just come on as uh, the lowest possible mode, which in this case is 1%. Next is tactical, which again is 100%, 50%, and then 9 kilohertz, very similar to other modes. And last is fishing, which is very similar again to tactical, except it does have that lowest lumen mode. So a couple other things you can do. You can hit test. You can click a mode you want and hit test, and your flashlight then will instantly do that. And uh, that's really nice when you're wanting to test some of these strobe features or customized features that you want to do. So I want it to be uh, on for, let's say, that long and off for 50 milliseconds, and I hit next, and I want it to be on again for, let's say, uh, 50, and then off for 30. You know, let's test that, see how it is. I click test, and the flashlight actually just hits that and repeat. It's really nice. So you've got SOS, which again is just like that. You have uh, Customize, which is the um, kind of basically the same thing. It's light durations. And then Frequency is what test pattern you want it to run. Uh, how, how often you want to turn on and off. So is 8 good or not? And actually, my light just disconnected there. And that's what it does when it uh, connects again. Not sure why that happened. Maybe my USB hub uh, failed quickly there for a second. Anyways... Um, so yeah, you can adjust how fast you want it to blink. 26 hertz is pretty darn fast. When you've got a setting that you like and you want to customize, you just hit upload and it writes it directly to the flashlight. You hit OK, you disconnect, and you're good to go. Personally, I'm going to run it on uh, default mode here. I'm going to run it to 1%, and I'm going to put in... Uh, Let's do 35%. I'm going to add a mode. I'm going to make this one 100%. And I'm going to make this one about 75%. Somewhere in there. 70% maybe. And the program's a little bit touchy. And I'm going to write this one to the flashlight. The program's a little bit touchy. Um, these sliders you've got to be just exactly on. As you can see from my mouse... Um, and you also can't expand it to take full advantage of your screen. Both those are things I'd wish Next Torch would fix. I should also note about this program that, um, for me, it was detected as a virus on Windows 10. Uh, both Chrome detected it as a virus, as did Microsoft Edge. Um, they both let me download it if I told it up and down that I was aware that it was a virus and there was no problems. Um, the built-in antivirus to Windows 10, which is what I'm running at home, also detect this as a virus. I had to shut it off in three different places for it to uh, allow me to keep the file. 
Um, once I had the file downloaded, it was in a RAR format, which is a, a less common uh, packed up format. I really think Nextorch should change both these things for the light to uh, gain mainstream popularity. They should use zip. Um, it's just the most common. RAR is not a common file format. And if you do end up downloading this and using this software, I'd recommend use 7z, which is free and open source, to unpack that file. So once I had it downloaded, I wanted to make sure it wasn't a virus. I had asked Nextorch and they assured me it wasn't, but you know, in today's day and age, you can never be so sure. So I ran it through Virus Totals, and Virus Totals is a website that uh, compares files against 61 different antivirus programs, I believe. And uh, it came up as clean and no problems, and I'll show screenshots of that here. I uh, then ran it through an additional program at work that's pretty sophisticated, and it showed no uh, bad activity. And this is as of uh, April 5th, 2017. So at that point, I decided to give it a try. Um, Nextorch really needs to address these two issues on this software to make it uh, palatable for the mainstream consumer. Nobody's going to download and install a program that multiple programs uh, actively prevent you from using it because it tells you it's a virus. They just need to get that right before this goes mainstream. Other than that, I find the software pretty useful. Um, it's pretty cool that you can change the modes and get the flashlight programming to exactly how you want. Construction of this light is good. It's uh, solid aluminum and it really feels solid in the hand. It doesn't really rattle or anything. You're hearing my watch rattle actually. I'd call this a classic design. It's kind of old school. It's nothing uh, modern. It's not tactical. It's smooth. This has a deep reflector that has a uh, nice orange peel finish on it. The LED is deep down in there and I'll put some still shots here too. The bezel is uh, nicely polished as well. The button here on the back I wish was different. It's domed as you can see here. And uh, this light does not tail stand. The light did come with a lanyard but I'm not 100% sure where you'd put it unless you wrapped it around this, uh, this edge here. I do wish it had, it has some kind of um, squared knurling here. I wish it had more aggressive knurling. Um, it's kind of a slick flashlight. No real major issues, but if your hands were wet, it could become slippery. The light does um, have these raised, raised edges, which do a pretty good job of keeping it from uh, rolling around on a table. Um, although you can see on mine, it rocks back and forth pretty easily. Next torch did use some pretty thick grease on the head. Um, it really takes a decent amount of effort to turn it, and the head is non-removable, so I can't clean that grease out and replace it with my own. With this being a larger light and a larger head, I, and no pocket clip, this isn't uh, my choice for EDC. So here are my indoor beam shots, and as I mentioned before, this is high mode, and as you can see, it's got a really pretty tight hot spot in the light, and then some flood, and I'll move this a little bit. Stepping down, and there is low, and there is strobe again. I believe this is set to 9 hertz by default. I've got the next torch, my torch S18650 night shots, and this you the light the UI on this light by default runs backwards. So let me uh, run through it here. So here is strobe. It doesn't come on in strobe by default, but it's the easiest to put this through. Here's high at 660 lumens, medium, and low, which is two lumens. And as usual, you can't see that on the camera. As you might have seen during those demo shots, this light only has one button here. So this is on, off, and modes. So there really isn't a momentary. Um, you can kind you can't even really half press it it's a full press every time um i wish they changed that to a little bit better switch so you could do a momentary or a half press to change your modes or just add a button up front i think that that'd be nice the flashlight itself works as expected with no major flaws i'm taking it into account that you can uh, program it and change the ui around but it's outdated in the LED being used and its output amounts. The machine is good, but I wish it could tail stand, 
had a spot for a lanyard that was uh, more traditional, I guess, with a hole, and that its head could come completely off for cleaning and grease replacement. With its larger deep head and smooth reflector, this is a little bit more of a flood, or sorry, a thrower than a flood. I like the idea of the light being programmable with a computer. I feel like once it's set up to your liking, you probably won't use it again. Um, it's a little bit gimmicky, but then at the same time, it's pretty handy. The software is not very hard to use and does offer, offer nice abilities to change it or customize it to you, exactly your liking. I hope this PC customizable portion of flashlights gains in popularity. I really think other brands could learn something from this, produce some nice software, and just give users that little bit extra. It's an enthusiast feature, but let's face it, you're watching flashlight videos on YouTube, so you're probably an enthusiast. Thanks for watching this video. I'd appreciate you like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks.